And we are live on Instagram. Hello, hello, everyone. And on Facebook. <laughs> hello, Facebook world. <laughs> Welcome to episode number 87 of Window Treatment Friday Live Edition, where Kim and I get together here every Friday morning around 9 a.m. to talk all things window treatments. So let me just let Kim in here on Instagram. Accept request. Come on. Accept. Oh, great. Now it does not work. Oh, here. here. There you are. Here you are. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now I have to join you here, so give me a second. For those of you just joining us, welcome to episode number 87 of Window Treatment Friday Live. We are going to be discussing uh, blocking drapery panels. Um, for those of you who do not know us, we're just giving one second for Vita to join us on Instagram. And I'm gonna be there in just a second, it's okay. spinning. Okay, there you are. Hi, Here friends. I am guys, hello, 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 how are you? Good morning and thank you everybody for joining us. I'm just gonna quickly introduce, our, we'll quickly introduce ourselves for those of you who are joining us for the first time. I'm uh, Kimberly Seraphim. I am um, one of the partners here at Window Works. We are located in Livingston, New Jersey. And I'm I, lo I, love, I love how it sounds, Kim, one of the Thank partners. You. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing it from your mouth, and it sounds amazing. Thank you. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank we'll you. talk We'll talk more about that for sure, but I didn't want to just kind of like um, <laughs> glance over that. And uh, my name is Vita, Vita Vygovska. I'm the owner of Vitalia Inc. Window Treatments. We are located in the Philadelphia area serving interior designers with all of their window treatment needs. And today will be a little bit of a different episode because today is day number eight of the war in ukraine eight days ago on thursday february 24th unprovoked and unannounced um, russia invaded my home country of ukraine so if you guys don't know it yet or you were wondering where my accent comes from. I am originally from Ukraine, from a town called Lviv. It's a, it's not a big town, but it's it's been made somewhat popular or at least known in the last eight days because of the reporting that has been done from that town. So I was born there and I left when I was almost 16 to come to America as an exchange student. And that was over 30 years ago, actually. However, I've been back there several times. I still have very, very close friends who live there who are in actual imminent danger. My husband, Vitaly, is from Kiev, which is the mm. capital of Ukraine. That's in the center of the country about and he also has very close friends. His family, his parents have very close friends. So needless to say, we have been affected by this war on a very, very deep, emotional, very personal level. So it's been admittedly very difficult to do anything around here in the last week. It's been hard to concentrate on window treatments. I think my business probably would have come to a halt if it wasn't for an amazing effort of my team. Um, Beata, who is my window treatment specialist, and Lisa, who is my general manager, they've been taking care of pretty much everything because I just can't help but be glued to all the news channels, all the reports, um, all the social media, everywhere where we can get a glimpse of what's happening. We're also checking in with our friends um, if not on an hourly, but definitely on a daily basis, just checking in with them, trying to figure out what is happening there and what what their spirits are like. We've also been doing a lot of reading on why this is happening, how this is happening, and also most importantly, what can we do to help the people? So I just wanted to real quick show you, this is the map of Europe. Not to give you a geography lesson, but um, this 
point right here I'm showing with my cursor. This is the territory of Ukraine. It is actually the second largest country in Europe. It is a um, beautiful country, of course, because it's my, my homeland. It's, it's very rich in, in, in its soil. It's very rich in a lot of its natural resources. It's not a perfect country. It is a flawed country in many ways. Perhaps if it wasn't, then maybe I wouldn't have been here. But be that as it may, no country ever deserves to be invaded by a neighboring country, nor does it deserve to be bombed and shelled and have their citizens killed the way it's happening right now. And what is happening is this is also a map of Ukraine close up and in red you guys are seeing this these are the ter territories that have officially been declared as occupied by the Russian forces and they are on their way to take over the capital um, which is Kiev there are uh, bombings and shellings and killings and um, attacks happening all over the country right now it is absolutely heartbreaking it is unfathomable that this is happening i never thought that I, we learned this about world war ii when we were little kids we studied this in textbooks as as past history as something that could never ever be repeated again and here we are living through this reality which is leaving us speechless which is leaving us completely in disbelief we've been what's been helping us here is just be close with our family here just be close with our friends i've i haven't um i don't remember the last time i, I hugged my kids as tightly as mm -hmm. i am right now i'm hugging my mm -hmm. husband tighter than ever before um, we all the friends all the close ones it's Quite, actually quite remarkable that something so horrific can bring the people so much closer together. This is what is happening in a lot of cities, a lot of towns of Ukraine. So imagine you had plans, you were about to go to work on a on a Thursday morning, you were, you were about to send your kids to school, you were just about to go about your ordinary day, and just like that, in a matter of seconds, your entire life has been completely ripped apart. And what's even worse is, if I were to put this into a parallel um, with America, it is like, for example, Kim lives in New Jersey, and I live in Pennsylvania. It is as if, and I know maybe it's not an, an exact example, but just from geographical standpoint and from the standpoint of how intertwined our cultures are and how intertwined all of our relationships are. A lot of our families live um, in, in Russia. A lot of our friends are from Russia. So it is like as if the governor of New Jersey declared a war on Pennsylvania. And just like that, um, Kim say Carlos where to just leave his home and in, invade Pennsylvania. And just like that, my husband Vitaly would be like, you Vita and the kids, you get in the car and start driving west, but I'm going to stay here in Pennsylvania and defend my country, my homeland, my home, my territory. I mean, this is how close geographically this is. This is also how close culturally and just everything that how, how close the ties are which is all of which what makes this so unbelievable. Um, I want to say unprecedented except that in doing a lot of research and a lot of reading, unfortunately it has been, there is a lot of precedent for this. We forget, you know, we live in a, in a somewhat overall generally peaceful environment and we forget. And what is happening is just, there are no words. There are no words to describe for what's happening. But the worst of it is the humanitarian um, aspect of it. People usually in and just like in cities here, like if you think of New York City or Philadelphia or any big city, um, people a lot of people live in somewhat high rises. Or if they're mm -hmm. not high rises, they are like ten-story buildings, twenty-story mm -hmm. 
So they had to have a choice but to go down to their sellers. Um, those that don't have sellers don't have a choice but to go down to their metro stations. And this is what they live like, Kim. I mean, like, imagine, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have my morning coffee and I, I feel ridiculous because I think, oh, it's, I made it too strong or I made it too, yeah. too or something, you know, ridiculous like that. And then I think mm -hmm. of people who don't have um, anything anymore. So, as we know, a lot of people are fleeing Ukraine. Over a million people have fled Ukraine at this point. And so the, the message that I want to bring to you today um, is a lot of you. I've been so blessed with friends and colleagues and clients who have reached out to me and asked me how can they help. And so I just wanted to give you a few ways in which you can help if, if you are so inclined. Um, one of the charities that I found is called World Central Kitchen. And what they do is they go to various parts of the world that, that need them. And at this point, Ukraine needs them. So they're over there. They're actually stationed in Poland. Um, but they're working with a lot of restaurant owners in Kiev to essentially supply food to all the refugees, to all the people that have been misplaced, to all the people who have lost their homes. The second charity that I have researched and found is called Save the Children. It's <laughs> unbelievable to think, you know, think of my kids my, who are 12 and 9, that they would be going through something like that. Um, you know, my, my daughter today said that something was off with her yogurt or I don't know, something like that. You know, I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> do you understand what is happening? Um, in, in in your mother's home country. And I didn't say that, but I definitely thought that. But the, the point is that it is, we as adults, we try to protect our children. We try to save them from harm. We try to save them from, from, from all the awful things that are happening in the world, no matter how small. And here there are these parents who don't have a choice but to, not not show the kids what's happening, but they, they they don't they can't take them anywhere. They can't. The, the children are witnesses to the um, atrocities that are happening in the country. And so this organization helps with some of the psychological impact. It helps with some basic supplies. It helps with a lot of things, um, specifically pointing it towards towards the children, which I thought was very heartwarming. So those are the two kind of main and central official, they're big organizations. So if they have uh, their, what is it, three, three, 301 something charity, you know, they have that status. 501c3 nonprofit organizations, they have their PL statements on their website, so you know exactly the, what the proportion of your contribution goes where. So if you feel so inclined to contribute to those organizations, you can. I also found a, a local organization, also a nonprofit, but much smaller. They may not have all of their financial statements on their website, and their website may look a little bit hokey, but what isn't is the effort, the amazing effort mm -hmm. that they're putting together. There's a lot of um, Ukrainian and Russian uh, immigrants in the Northeast Philadelphia, which is kind of where I am. I'm from the Northeast region of, of Philadelphia. So there's this organization who has been helping the immigrants for very many years, and now they are pointing their attention to the crisis in Ukraine. So they are collecting um, all these supplies to help orphans that are misplaced from all over Ukraine that are currently being transported to the west of Ukraine, actually to Kiev, which is the city where I was born and grew up. So this particular charity being local, being that it's going to help the kids in my city, that's the one that really hit home for me. And we've donated to other charities in the last week or so. And the next one that I personally will be donating is this one. You can either do it with supplies if you local you can also go on their website it's called um, new world association um, if you wanted to donate to them if if monetary donation is not in your cards there's one thing that you can do and that is go on change.org and help um, or rather sign a petition calling on NATO to close the airspace over Ukraine so 
I, I appreciate you guys um, listening yes, to me. I know this is not about window treatments today or rather for the last couple of minutes, but it is something that of course I could not let go of. It is very difficult to think about anything else. And I appreciate your listening to me about that. Well, Vita, my heart goes out to you and I wish that we did live closer so I could give you a, a hug because um, I can't even imagine what you're going through. I am first generation born in this country. Um, Carlos, who is my partner, he was actually born in Portugal. Both of our families are from Portugal. We still have a lot of family that lives over in Portugal and different parts of Europe. So I, I, I can't even imagine what you are going through, being so far away, feeling that helpless feeling when you're here in this country where you wake up and you can, like you said, have your morning cup of coffee, but you have friends that they, they don't, don't have that. They don't even anymore. know where they don't even know where their next glass of water is coming from. So exactly right. it's, it's my heart goes out to you. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine what it feels like, but um, thank you, know. you, thank you. And I have to say, um, there is. I, I just out, outlined a few ways in which we Americans, and I consider myself an American <laughs> and Ukrainian, both, um, in which you guys can help. There is another way that I didn't outline, and you just reminded me. If you have a friend who is Ukrainian or a friend of a friend who is Ukrainian just reach out to them and just say, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I am, I am with you. I stand with you. I have to tell you that every little thing helps. Every word, every mm -hmm. phrase, every text, every, uh, every image, every picture, every emoji, everything. <laughs> and, and there is no limit to it. Just because mm -hmm. you did it once today, don't feel like you're going to be bugging that person tomorrow. Do it again. And then the next day, do it again. Every single little teeny tiniest little thing helps somehow together in aggregate. It, it results in this amazing combined energy of support and when you feel supported you don't feel so alone you don't feel so abandoned you don't feel so helpless or hopeless mm -hmm. um and and i know none of our emojis are, are, are helping the, the the people that are literally getting shelled on the ground the kids that are getting orphaned the houses that are getting blown up Maybe they're not helping on a, a tangible physical level, but I'm telling you, it helps the people here, just like me, who is feeling somewhat helpless, who I can be there and helping them um, on a physical level, but on this combined energetic level for us to stay strong is incredibly important right now. So reach out to your friends, reach out to your acquaintances. I heard from people that I haven't spoken to in 20 years, mm. my, my very first boss my from my very first job out of college found me. I, I have made, mm. Mimi, thank you. Mm. Um, I, I have, I have uh, reconnected with, with people that I, I mean, <laughs> I haven't talked to them. I haven't, don't remember. I mean, I remember them now, but it's just the amount of support that I feel here and I think through that I am able to give to my friends there is just it's it's astounding and it's so helpful so that is something you guys can do reach out to your friends reach out to your acquaintances don't do it once do it as many times as you can because you're not bugging you're not being annoying you're not being a pest you're not doing you know any everything that you're doing helps every teeny tiny littlest thing helps so okay well Okay. With that, that. now with we're that. going to talk a little bit about color blocking on graves. <laughs> You know, it, it, with that, you know, I mean, it's it's it is a little bit of an awkward segue, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing of it, it is, you guys, I'm turning into Luann. The thing of it is, mm -hmm. is that <laughs> um, 
that our life here goes on and I have to remind myself that my life here goes on. Um, we talk, my husband and I talk about it all the time. We have to go on. We have to keep doing our work. We have to be strong for our children. I mean, on a very basic economical level, <laughs> economics 101, we have bills to pay. <laughs> we, we have to do our work. So this has been an amazing lesson in compartment, com compartmentalization. Yes. Compartmentalizing. <laughs> yep. Yes. Learning how to compartmentalize and, and do the work for a few hours and then take a second and break down. And sometimes you never know when that breakdown will, will happen, how it will happen, what will trigger it. And then you get yourself together and then you work for a couple of hours or an hour or 15 minutes or whatever block of time you have. And then, and then you can't help it, but you go back to all the news trying to figure out what's going on there. You check in with your friends but with all that said work still must go on and that's what Kim and I do here this is you know part of our job if you will this is a commitment that we have made to you guys so we are here to also tell you about some of the pretty of the window treatment so let's just segue to that okay. well this is a project that we did for House of Funk um, is a project that uh, we did a couple years ago and it's one of my favorites. So much so that I have recreated this exact look for my primary bedroom. Oh, now, nice. Yeah, now I just have to figure out what kind of hardware, ha ha, um, that I want to use. Um, with but, a woman who loves and knows know. everything about hardware can not decide on I, her own well, is what we're talking, saying here. <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little um, like Goldilocks, I'm trying to find the right shade of brass to go with the brass <laughs> on my bed. I know it's absurd. It is absurd. Carlos is this close to being like, I'm going to just pick it and it's, it's, we're done. Um, so whenever I install it in my home, um, again, I will, we will take pictures and all that good stuff. But for this project here, what we have is a pretty, um, embroidered, uh, semi embroidered fabric from Villanova. And it's embroidered on kind of like a lightweight sheer type of fabric. And we did just a solid gray band at the bottom out of a just a lightweight also um, just like cotton duck from also from Romo, I believe. Um, I don't remember. Again, this was going on a couple years ago. And um, with that, we didn't make the band too large, but we just wanted to have that thicker detail. So the band is probably about... I think it's only about like 18 inches. Mm -hmm. um, here you can see a little yeah, bit better here. Perfect, right there. And what we did was we actually installed these on black French return rods. Um, it was one of, uh, going back on how many years ago this was, this was probably one of the second or third jobs that we did do a French return rod here. And um, the banding again, Sandra just wanted it to have that little detail at the bottom. And I think it really just finished off Mm -hmm. the spacing here it's lovely and i also yeah. like how it kind of coordinates with the mm -hmm. rod you know the yeah. dark on the bottom, bottom coordinates with the dark, dark on, on the top, top. It's, it's just a detail it's just a different way just slightly different with a little twist so mm -hmm. uh, we're just showing you guys the different ways of uh, rather not different ways to have this technique in your arsenal so if mm -hmm. you're looking for ways to make something a little bit more special for a client for that special client this is one of the ways to do it so we're showing a different example of how it can be done yeah and it just kind of enhances like the same way we talk about when you add a trim to a drape think of this as just like a layer of trim it's just a little bit bigger <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a blocking project that um, we did a couple of years ago also. This was done for Z Domus Design. I've talked about Z Domus several times here and the very talented um, Rose Zeffirino, who is at the helm of that design firm. This was a model home in Delaware, a two-story family room. And we did not two, but three part blocking here. So you see the light colored fabric at the very top that transitions to sort of a teal colored fabric in the middle and then finishes off with a high pattern at the bottom. Um, I have some close-ups here. Mm -hmm. So this is a close-up of this is, this was an um, it cut fabric. Do you say I cut or it cut? I say I cut. I cat. I say it got <laughs> <laughs> potato potato. It's so weird. Yep. Like everyone says it's different. It's like when you hear someone say the drapery hardware line like Brimar and then some people call it Brimar and I'm like, I don't know. Oh, interesting. I call yeah. it Brimar. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So, yeah. so you know, it's, it's, it's that funky fabric that mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that that's that that was in um, a couple. That of years was all ago. the rage about ten years ago. Yeah, all the rage exactly, yeah. and and this is the same pattern in the same uh, panels, but a different vantage point. So you can really see how these. Uh, it what's what's interesting about a three part blocking. I've used it twice or three times at this point for a two-story panels because two stories are so long you know and they're and these panels are skinny it's actually only one width of material believe it or not yeah. so in, because these are skinny windows too and there's not a lot of space between the window and the fireplace and the corner so well, we're trying to find ways to break them up to not make them look so like sausage like <laughs> like a string bean yeah so like a little string bean exactly so when you do blocking i think it's important to talk through about how tall how big that blocking is and whether it relates to anything so here you can see in this close up that our blocking related directly to the to each window so you see the top blocking correlating or aligning with the top window and the bottom blocking aligning with the bottom window so we didn't just want it to be like a hodgepodge or mishmash of combinations of windows and architectural elements and fabrics so that's something what if you do decide to use the t this technique to be aware of now okay real quick i want to take kind of take this apart a little bit and i'm gonna i know the answers but i'm gonna ask you the questions just so that if um people are watching if they have these same questions and are watching it you know later on today and they're like man i really wish they would have answered their ask you know, talk about this. Sure. So I know this because haha, I made this huge mistake and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when it came to doing color blocking or banding on panels, mm -hmm. this is a three story high and you did three different fabrics. Was there yeah. a conversation with um, the designer about the weight of the fabric and the types of fabrics that she selected because yeah. these, I mean, you're talking about, this is what, probably 18, 19 feet up mm -hmm. that, um, that's something, a factor that you have to consider. You can't just slap three fabrics together, you know, cross your fingers and hope it, you know, pleats nicely and drapes as nicely as did. So kind of talk right. through the process of how was there, did she come to you with the iCat fabric and say, I really want to use this fabric on the bottom or, you know, talk to me about that. Yeah. So Rose usually uses our fabric library to mm -hmm. outfit her model homes. So it's nice that she usually comes to us and we go through um, all of our fabrics and find the right color palette and patterns. In this particular model, she wanted to go high pattern. So we weren't mm -hmm. afraid to use interesting bold patterns. Sometimes some model homes, a design firm may have a different vision and they want it to be more subdued, more monochromatic in this model we want it to be all out high color high pattern so I believe we found the ACOT fabric first mm -hmm. she really liked it we really liked it and then based on the colors of the ACOT then we came up with the other two colors to answer your other question is yes we absolutely talked about the weight of the fabric because what Kim is referring to if the bottom layer is too heavy for the top layer then what will happen is that panel will really stretch out so if you were going for 19 foot panel it may be 19 feet and two inches or three inches so if you wanted it to be off the floor all of a sudden it's on the floor so you have to be very careful about the weight and the texture and the makeup of the fabric so that it looks cohesive so stretching is issue number one and issue number two is you want it to drape and pleat and essentially lay about the same so if you have a certain makeup of the top fabric you want to kind of match the makeup to the bottom fabric so that the folds are nice nice and even throughout the entire panel versus them being, let's say, nice and even on the first two layers and then the bottom layer just goes <laughs> all over the place <laughs> because it does not drape or fold as nicely um, as the first two layers. And and to, I'm, I'm going to kind of reveal my little boo-boo and error that I had. It was a project many years ago, the first time, one of my first projects when I went out on my own, so to speak. And, um, you know, when you're doing this, it was a, it was a very big lesson. Like Luann says, what are the lessons that you can look in the mirror and look back? Like where, where, where did you potentially go wrong in this, in this situation? And it made me realize that I wasn't standing in my space and giving the designer a little bit of pushback. I yeah. kind of let her, you know, railroad the whole consultation and 
she wanted to do a lightweight sheer single layer with a heavier bottom layer and wanted the band to be about 40 inches because she had a sofa going in front of the window and it should have been my first clue of being like, well, if you have the sofa in front of the window, you're really not going to see this band. So let's come up with a different design. But again, mm -hmm. she was very adamant about it. And I kind of just let her take the idea and run with it. And mm -hmm. when it, um, when the workroom was putting it together, of course, the lightweight cheer mm -hmm. and the weight of the bottom, it was causing a lot of puckering at the seam yeah. where the two of them were, were seen uh, together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it just, it, made the top layer look like crap in just plain English. And so the way that the workroom thought that they could help with the um, the puckering and whatnot was because it was 118 inch goods, we had all this extra fabric. Let's self line the shear to kind of give it a little bit, bit more weight. Okay. So I said, all right, I went back to the designer, told her that she was like, yeah, I guess that should be okay. Workroom made the drapes. We installed the drapes. The client hated them. Oh my gosh! So this is your second like, trip. No, or first trip. Oh, that's no, the first, first, first okay. trip. Oh, so, so when the, when it was puckering, you didn't install. The workroom just told you about well, it. As as it was in the in the production process, yeah. they said, you know, I'm looking at them. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't look good. I I, I can't. We can't hang this. Like this is a no no. So I said, <laughs> what is the solution? Mm -hmm. Given like this is what they really want. They're super mm -hmm. adamant about it. Again me my responsibility as someone who is the expert in the window treatment field was to give the pushback and now that was a very very expensive lesson that i had to learn but yeah. now when someone wants to do something like this i go through every single step at nauseam as to why i don't think it's a good idea and if you still want to do it you're going to have to sign off on it because i don't really want to deliver it but so and then here's the other thing to think about the fabric the banding fabric at the bottom had was like a silk embroidery type of fabric so it's heavy mm -hmm. and you you have to line that fabric and the band at 40 inches so here you are i not even thinking about this from what does it look like from the outside so you have this gray sheer mm -hmm. on the outside that all of a sudden then it meets up with this white fabric so from <laughs> the outside it looked ridiculous it looked, it looked oh, wow. ridiculous and i'm like and as I'm, I, I don't really go on installs, but the, the customer wasn't happy and Billy called me. I said, no, 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 I'm in the area. Let me come up. And I'm walking up the driveway. I'm like, well, that does not look good. And I'm thinking of other words in my head as I'm walking up, but you know, we're, <laughs> we're live on Instagram. And so I said to the client, I said, listen, um, yeah, I'm not really loving this. We're going to have to redo this. And if you love these fabrics, I'm thinking mm -hmm. we do what we did in the dining room where we make the pretty fabric at the bottom and so we can actually see it as stationary panels and do the sheer as, because then that was her other complaint. I picked the sheer because I don't need the privacy. I just wanted a little bit of sun protection and okay. now doubling it, you can't really see through it. So okay. she wasn't happy with the whole thing. So I said, okay. I, I think we do it this way. And the way that we did it, she ended up loving it and be like, oh, this is great. So, but that was a major, major learning lesson for me because in my gut, I felt like, I don't really think this is going to work, but let's go with it. Yeah. And not like not going back and saying, look, these fabrics are two totally different weights and two totally different compositions. Mm -hmm. It's when we seam them together, it's not going to look right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so. It takes it takes courage to push back on on our clients, mm -hmm. whether it is a end consumer who really wants what they want, or if it's a designer who really wants what she or he wants. It takes courage because you want to say yes, you want to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to say no. You don't want to deliver bad news. And sometimes I feel like we are the deliverers of bad news <laughs> because oh, you want this? I know not gonna work. Oh, you want this? Mm, mm, not no. gonna work either. Yeah, it's not gonna work either. No. I mean, I, I will say this, that there was uh, an instance maybe about like two years ago, right before the whole um, shutdown, that we were working on a project. It was a very crazy window. Not, It's not normal shaped. It was like a, I even, I remember I even asked you like, do you know of like, we, we can't do this. It was like a triangle, like a, almost looked like a house, this window. Oh, I think uh, I remember. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And every which way that we came up with, it just was not going to work and it would not function. And it just got to the point where it was like, you know, I don't think we're the people for you. 
and, yeah. and that's okay. And that's okay because Billy and I made that decision together because we knew that no matter what we were going to deliver mm -hmm. wasn't going to look right and it wasn't yeah. going to function. So why put everyone through that, that stress and that agita and then we're on the hook for something that doesn't it's really deliver. Possible. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, um, that's, so that's another lesson too, that it's okay to walk away from something. Mm, there is a big lesson. I think we should probably do a whole episode on walking away, <laughs> except they will have no images. Yeah, because exactly. Never exactly, exactly. <laughs> Here's another project of yours, Kim. It's very pretty. So this is a project that we did for Susan Lari Architects out in Long Island. So these were um, functioning drapes for a primary bedroom. These were doors that go out into a lovely... Um, uh, patio area. Uh, their home was right on the water. And here, um, what Suzanne selected, it was the same fabric, just in two different colors. Mm -hmm. And so um, because of the tall high ceilings and where we were installing the rod, she really wanted that uh, um, bottom band to be pretty high. Um, again, this was a project that we did probably 12 or 13 years ago. So I, I mean, I, I could have pulled the paperwork. Um, to see but i believe this band was about four feet because it was really what we wanted to make it well yeah because i'm looking at the chair and the yeah, chair is yeah, usually yeah. 30 36 and so, it's probably like half a foot or a foot higher than that so it's probably about 40 to 40 yeah so interesting. in in that in that aspect so mm -hmm. um i just really think the way that it came out it just again two solid Beautiful. fabrics and it was, uh, I believe, a silk fabric, two solid fabrics that just then you create a pattern that way. So if you're ever afraid of using a bold pattern, think about blocking because it does add a layer of design to the window treatments. It's lovely. Thank you. Okay, here is another uh, example of a very, very similar example, problem, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, this is a project that we did. Uh, it was done by Vitalia Inc. Window Treatments. And the designer who we did this for was Kate Lee Designs. She is a wonderful, very talented designer located uh, in here in Bucks County. This was a two-part blocking. The bottom blocking was about 30-ish inches or so, and it related to the wainscoting that is going all around this dining room. So this is one angle. Here is another angle. This was a beautiful dining room. Let me see. Here, here, this pic, th this angle I really like because you can see the ceiling, which is really the hero of this room. Mm -hmm. You can see the chandelier. You can see part of the chair, so you know that this is a dining room. So you can see that. Uh, we we the designer wanted to do some sort of combination of black and white by doing a pattern here would have competed with that beautiful wallpaper and she really wanted that wallpaper to be the hero which i absolutely agree with so how do you find a pattern that complements another pattern without fighting with it you combine two solid fabrics and create a pattern to your earlier point kim so i thought she did a beautiful job here we worked very closely together on this and kind of design this together. She's the one who really listens to our expertise, also uses our, um, sorry, I have all these messages that are popping up that I have to. So, so Kate and, and my team have worked very closely together on this. We used acrylic rod for this. So in case you're like, where's the rod? <laughs> you really can't see it because it's acrylic, but of course you can see it when you're in the room and acrylic rod, acrylic hardware looks very pretty. The brackets, there are no acrylic brackets. So you still have to use metal brackets. So we used uh, black finish for the bracket. So that's why you may be seeing these smaller pictures, these small black dots. And so even the black dots of the brackets relate to the black wallpaper and re relate to the black blocking at the bottom. So this was one of our favorite projects from I think either last year or the year before. The years all seem sort of uh, wrap into each other <laughs> at this point and uh, we're very proud of it so doing blocking for a room where you already have a pattern that you don't want to compete with is a really good way of doing window treatments and just i think there is a vendor that does have acrylic brackets too by the way what mm -hmm. That's new. yeah tell yeah. us more about it I, I I learn things as I go. I'm gonna. Along. I'm like trying. I see the catalog, and I but there's definitely um, acrylic 
brackets out there. Uh, I will have to look it up and I will let you all know next week. Please do. Yes. I wonder how, but you have to, the back plate would have to be metal unless you drill right through the bracket. Yeah, I think, but, then, I think but, then, that, but then you'll see the screws. Yeah, right? I think there are acrylic brackets. I have to think, <laughs> flex my, my muscles. I look at a lot of drapery hardware catalogs. I had to do, a, a, especially this week, I'm working on a new project that we're trying to find a, a very specific hardware. And um, it's been nice to flex the hardware muscle again. I haven't had to do it in a, in a couple of years. So yeah, I'm going to go back and look at the different, um, cause it, I see, you. I see it. It's a square bracket. Okay. Even the, the, the plate Here's square. another idea. We should do an episode on just acrylic hardware and all the different options that are available out there. Yes, ma'am. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, everyone. So that concludes our episode of, um, color blocking panels uh, to um, keep up with everything Miss Luann is doing because she has a lot of things going on right now. Head on over to luannigarrett.com where you can listen to all her latest episodes. You can listen to the audio version of Window Treatment Friday where Luann and Vita talk about the business side of window treatments. Um, there, Luann is also launching a new podcast about window treatments where Vita gives her 10 minute tips, correct? Vita, the podcast isn't out yet. So we'll let you know when that podcast launches. So if you are in the window treatment um, market, if you are a window treatment expert like myself and Vita, this will definitely be a podcast that you're going to want to listen to on the weekly basis because it will help tremendously with your window treatment business. I'm excited about it. It's going mm -hmm. to launch in, I believe, three or four weeks. Luann's goal is to launch it before IWCE, which mm -hmm. is the International Window Coverings Expo, which you're going to, right, Kim? I am going to, yes. Awesome. All right. Oh, I'll get to see you in person. I feel like it's been a minute. I know. <laughs> I know. I we, we, all, we, we live, just so everyone knows, we only live about like an hour and a half from each other. But we only see each other at conferences. We have to go to other states to see each other, which is kind of like wacky. I feel like that's the name of the game nowadays. That's how life is. Yeah. You know, just probably not just us. That's just, no, that's it's, just it's, how life it's is it's nowadays. It's crazy, but you know. Yep, it is yep, what it so, is. so anyway, so back to the podcast. So Luann is launch her intent, you know, we'll see yeah. what happens, but the intent right now is to launch it right before at IWCE, which mm -hmm. would be like the last week of March, beginning week of April for the podcast. And what makes me personally so excited mm -hmm. is because Luann is giving me an opportunity to be a guest a host I, and to do a, a solo episode. So every week I will be coming all queued up to you guys for an episode called Vita's Tip in 10, where I try to stay as close to the 10 minutes as I can possibly can <laughs> and uh, just focus on one singular thing that I, I want to tell you about, talk to you about, um, like in and out, just I, I think of it as the shot of espresso thing that gets you on your way. <laughs> Okay. And uh, if you are new to the window treatment market and uh, you're just starting to get that ball rolling, head on over to the Window Works website. We have a free ebook that Luann uh, wrote many years ago, but it still has very relevant points. Um, it's Architectural Digest Isn't Coming 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatments. It is like a window treatment 101, so to speak. <laughs> And from Vitalia Inc., we also have a free gift for you. It's a curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. We call it 37 and a half window treatment ideas for you to use, steal, swipe, and use immediately in your next design project. And you can get yours at vitaliainc.com. Perfect. And if you are in the New Jersey and New York area and you have a uh, custom drapery project that you're possibly thinking about doing color blocking, I would love to help you out with that. So head on over to, um, you can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook at Windowworks. If you're also in the area, we are having our first lunch and learn. Um, it's been two years since we've had an event here at Windowworks. It is um, happening this Monday at 1230. So if you follow us on Windowworks, you can find the Eventbrite link in our bio.
Awesome. And if you are in the Philadelphia area and you're an interior designer looking for support with your window treatments, that is exactly what we do here at Vitalia Inc. We are a one-stop shop, a white glove service, a concierge level service for exclusively to interior designers who are ready to fly first class in the world of window treatments. So please give us a call, DM, PM, and we'll be happy to support you. Alrighty, everyone. Well, that concludes our episode this week. Uh, Vita, my heart is with you. Like I said, I wish I could give you a hug, um, but you know, with thank with you, thank you. It's okay. I else. feel I feel every single virtual <laughs> hug, you guys. So if you want to send me your virtual hugs, <laughs> do not shy away. <laughs> do not be stingy. <laughs> Please keep sending me your virtual hugs. <laughs> I feel every single one of them. Alrighty, everyone, have a great weekend, and we will see you next Friday. Bye-bye, everyone.